Some call it a dance, a duet of movement in which the giver is the receiver and the receiver the giver. Its roots are a thousand years old, but is very much a therapy of this century. It's called shiatsu, shi meaning finger, atsu meaning pressure. Like its first cousin, acupressure, it's based on the philosophy of traditional Chinese medicine. Traditional Chinese medicine is based on the belief in a vital life force called qi, which flows through the body along internal channels called meridians. Like the blood in our veins, if that flow becomes blocked or stagnant, we get sick. The oriental view of health is primarily based on holism, prevention, and making use of one's own body's innate healing capabilities to get well and to stay healthy. We say that when there's a dysfunction, in the body, any pain or illness, that there's an imbalance of energy. So either there's not enough energy or there's too much energy. Shiatsu relies on the experience of touch, a tactile communication between practitioner and patient. Like traditional Chinese medicine, Shiatsu works on the body's energy system, applying pressure to meridian points called subo to stimulate ki, the Japanese word for qi. While acupressure relies on the thumb and fingers, shiatsu practitioners also use their hands, arms, elbows, even their feet to stimulate the body. Shiatsu differs, differs from other massage therapies primarily in our technique. As opposed to something like a, a Swedish massage where they use oils and it's more of a muscle manipulation. We perceive the body more in terms of energy or chi. And so again, our aim is to balance the energy within the body by looking for a cause in order to treat the symptom. Shiatsu practitioners undergo formal training through programs like the one offered by the Shiatsu School of Canada. So we have our Western subjects, such as anatomy, physiology, and pathology, as well as our Eastern sciences in Shiatsu. And we also offer auxiliary, auxiliary modalities here at the school, including um, so tai, tai chi, Chinese herbs, as well as ethics, communications, and, and self-care. If you decide to try shiatsu therapy, you can expect your first session to begin with questions about your health, diet, and lifestyle. I think primarily my clientele um, is people coming in for low back pain, neck and shoulder stiffness, headaches, migraines, uh, menstrual disorders, digestive disorders, um, fatigue and insomnia are also quite common. Once an imbalance of energy is pinpointed, the practitioner begins a treatment designed to return the body to balance and wholeness. While acupuncture requires a needle for every acupoint selected for treatment, Shiatsu covers several points at one time. Well, Shiatsu is traditionally done with clothes on, um, either on the floor using a Shiatsu mat or using a table. And the sessions are usually an hour long, or from an hour to an hour and a half. And depending on what one is coming in for, if it's for relaxation purposes, or if they're coming for a specific condition, the treatment reactions will vary. Don't be surprised if your abdomen gets particular attention. In Shiatsu, it is known as Ki Kai, or Ocean of Ki, a reservoir of life energy that can offer the practitioner valuable information. If something is more acute, so they've had it maybe for a week up till five years, we may do um, once a week or twice a week for five sessions. But if an illness is more chronic, meaning it's been there for a longer period of time, then we may do once a week for 10 sessions and evaluate it at that point. The medical doctor is trained to label an illness or label the, the disease, then they treat the disease. Whereas in traditional Chinese medicine, we don't treat diseases. We don't label diseases, we treat the person and then the person treats their life. Millions of North Americans suffer from some kind of chronic pain. It can be an irritating twinge or a constant throb that incapacitates. Dealing with chronic pain can be a vicious cycle. When we favor a sore knee, we may cause stresses to other parts of the body. When pain causes anxiety and depression, it can actually inhibit the body's production of natural painkillers. Any pain that lasts longer than six months can be defined as chronic. 
It can come in the form of muscle stiffness and soreness, back pain that can be sharp or aching, and joint pain that restricts our normal range of motion. We give names to this pain such as arthritis, tendonitis, and carpal tunnel syndrome. Chronic pain can be caused by injury, illness, or just the passing years. Researchers believe that the recent increase in back pain has to do with the way we spend our work day. People who sit for long periods of time suffer as much from back pain as people who lift all day. Over-the-counter painkillers can help, and so can prescription drugs such as muscle relaxants. While these treatments can alleviate pain temporarily, there are therapies that can try to go to the source. One area of concern is, of course, diet and its effects on our immune system. We've had many patients with whiplash and chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia, and this, the therapies which have worked best for us is to change the diet so that the diet reflects a internal environment which creates less inflammation. An elimination diet will help you discover if food allergies are the source of your pain. But what we eat can also help alleviate that pain. Calcium and magnesium are both necessary for maintaining healthy bones and muscle. Grains, legumes, fish, and certain fruits such as raisins and bananas are excellent sources of calcium and magnesium. If you don't feel that your diet is giving you the necessary vitamins and minerals, you can try supplements. So things like zinc, um, copper levels need to be looked at, manganese levels need to be looked at, B vitamin levels need to be looked at, vitamin C. Capsicum, the active ingredient in cayenne, is believed to increase blood flow in the joints and help reduce inflammation. Geranium, wintergreen, and white willow are known as natural painkillers, but consult your health care provider before using any herbal remedies. Acupuncture has also shown success in pain control. Needles seem to stimulate the brain to produce endorphins, the body's natural painkiller. In, in chronic pain, often in from an oriental perspective, we have stuck chi or stuck energy at that point. And with the needles, what we do is we actually allow that energy to move away from the area. The prescription for back pain used to be plenty of bad rest, but not anymore. It's been found that if you stay in bed, your muscle strength can decline by as much as 3% a day. But as soon as you can, you want to get that person up and walking. And as soon as you can, you want to get them doing aerobic exercises. And as soon as you can, you want to get them to be building their muscle in their back and in their stomach. Research has shown that regular exercise also releases endorphins while improving flexibility, muscle tone, and strength. The abdominal muscles and the muscles along the spine, if they are strong, will help actually help give some significant support to the back. In addition, if one is consistently exercising, you're causing your muscles to tug at the surface of your bone, and when you do that, you stimulate your bone to get stronger, and you have less of a chance of developing osteoporosis. Gentle, rhythmic exercise such as yoga, tai chi, and qi gong are good for strengthening muscles without too much strain. They also help reduce the stress that often comes with chronic pain. Sometimes it all comes down to an ounce of prevention. If that nagging twinge just won't go away, see your health care provider. Early attention may help prevent acute pain from becoming chronic.